Hear the word of the Lord. And God spoke all these things, and God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make your for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers of the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all of your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gate. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and earth, the seas and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that your Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that is your neighbor's. This is the word of the Lord. Pray with me. God, your commands are good because you are good. And your commands are good for us because you are good. And you delight in doing good to your people. God, we confess before you immediately on hearing your word that we do not, we don't keep your commands. In our hearts and in our actions, we, we violate them all the time. Lord, we need a Savior. We need, we need you, Holy Spirit, we need you to change our hearts, to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord God, we, we trust you. We trust that your word is right. We trust that your word is good. We trust that your word is the best thing for us. But Lord, there are places in our lives where we don't trust that. And we ask that you would, you would cleanse those, those places in our lives. You would bring us to new life. That you would bring us into obedience to Christ. Open our eyes and our ears to your word this morning and give us hearts that would obey. Lord, we want to obey you. We want to know you. We need you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you have not already done so, um, grab your Bible and uh, turn with me to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Um, if you don't have a Bible, there's, there's some Bibles in the seats there. Um, it's on page 57, by the way, uh, in those Bibles. But if you don't have a Bible of your own, we have a Bible for you. And um, this is an important part of, of what it looks like to, be, to worship here at Christ Community. Um, the Bible is the Word of God. It is our authority. It is our rule uh, for life and salvation. Um, it is God's Word. Um, but God commands us to be hungry for it. Not just to, uh, to agree that it's his word, but to be hungry for it. And we want to share that with you. So if you don't have a Bible of your own, we have one for you. And all you got to do is just give a little raise your hand and we'll bring one to you. It's a really nice one. Just take it home and let it be your Bible. <laughs> um, the, uh, and, just, and, and on that note, I just want to let you know, we've been praying how we can glorify God in our relationship with, with church, the church plant that meets here on Sunday nights. And I just wanted to let you know that over the last few weeks, um, Pastor Matt, the pastor of the church plant, um, he, was, he had been meeting with a guy who'd been coming to their church who's not a Christian. 
he, they, were, they were sitting down at IHOP and suddenly, just right in the middle of the conversation, the guy said, tell me how to surrender my life to Jesus. And, and as, and, and the, Pastor Matt led him through that and, and they talked about it and, pa, and Matt realized he does not have a Bible. So you know where he got one? He got one here. He got one of those Bibles that we, that we offer up every week. Um, this is just one way that God is glorifying himself in this relationship uh, between the churches. But also, um, what a wonderful gift that we can give, that we can give. Um, so let's, um, so we're going to keep doing that. Um, Exodus chapter 20, we're in verse 7. We're just looking at one verse today. <clears throat> You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. I want to remind you as we're going through the Ten Commandments what we're doing. Um, we are, we're going to talk about what this, what this commandment means. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a little something in my throat here. Um, we're going to talk about what it means, and we're going to talk about why it is that we don't obey it. Um, where we fall short. And, and we're going to look specifically to Jesus to, show, to, to see specifically how he fulfilled the law, how he fulfilled this commandment, and how we can have hope in him and have a, a life empowered by the Spirit um, in fulfillment of God's law in Christ. So as we, as we jump in here, I just want to notice this is just one verse today. You can imagine, uh, you know me, I, we could... We could talk about this for a while. I could probably get a few sermons out of this, but we're not going to. Um, but I want you to notice a few things in the verse uh, before we move on. Um, this has to do with God's name, right? If you remember, we've been, we've been working through the story of the Exodus, and the Exodus, you may know, you may, you may know it from, from our series, or you may know from, the, from Sunday school, or just some uh, a movie or something like that, that the Exodus is the story of how God rescued his people from Egypt. But every time that God says why he's doing this, it is, it's always for a specific purpose, so that he can make his name known. So that he can make his name known to a world to, uh, that does not know his name anymore. That, that a world in exile from his presence. So this story, this story is all, has been all about his name. And everything, and, and beyond that, we just have to recognize already, we, we've seen this about God all the way through this story, but everything in all of creation, everyone and everything, is given a name. Okay, you, you, didn't, arrive, you didn't give yourself your name. I mean, some of us, there's people who change their names, but... But names are something that are given. God is the only one who is not given a name. God reveals his name. God names himself. And I want you to recognize that, the, that not just the story of the Exodus, but the unfolding story of the Bible is, is unfolding the name of God. It's unfolding, and what I mean by that is, is, is God, God fills his, his name with with. All the meaning, all his, his character, his, his person, his identity, all of it is wrapped up in his name. And, and the Bible just unfolds that name as it goes, and we see that revealed fully in Jesus. But I want you to recognize right away that God, does, God doesn't say, I am the Lord. He says, I am the Lord, your God. That your God is important. He is the God who enters into the fray. He is the God who draws near. He is the God who fights for his people, and he puts his own name on them. See, God's faithfulness is central to that, because God knows, if you know anything about the story of the Bible, or if you reflect on, well, I mean, if you reflect on, on our own lives, um, you recognize that God already knows that these people are not going to be faithful. He already knows that. And he put his name on them. He said, you are mine and I am yours. 
The, the, these people are going to be faithless to, to God, and because of that, God's name is going to be blasphemed among the nations. And yet God says, you are mine. I am yours. I'm going to give you my name. God is faithful. God is abundantly faithful. The Lord, your God, he is pleased, pleased to be your God. Now, you shall not, let's, let's talk about what, this, what the command means. He says, you, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Um, taking the name of, of the Lord does have something to do with speech, okay? Um, but it's not entirely that. It's not, he, it doesn't, if all God wanted to say is, you shall not say the name of the Lord your God in vain, the Bible would have said that. It says, you will not take it. Now, what it, what it means by that, take has the sense of, of lifting up, of carrying, of, of bearing something, okay? It is a very common word. It's not like this technical theological term. It just means to, to bear the weight of something and to carry it. And we, we saw that a few weeks ago in Exodus 19 when God said, I, you saw with your own eyes how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. He He bore up Israel on eagles' wings. And so so Israel must not bear his name in vain. There's there's a reason why he's using that kind of language. So what does that mean? This this command definitely has to do with things that we say. But it isn't, it's just, it's not limited to that. Being the Lord's people. Being God's people mean, means we bear his name night and day, waking and sleeping, good times and bad times. Let's, let's push this into our context. Christian, when you are baptized into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you become a bearer of the name. God tells us in baptism, you are mine and I am yours. Now, my, in, in my primary family, being given that name, my primary family is no longer Daling. And it's no longer American. And it's no longer, it's no longer whatever my political affiliation is, or my, my race, or my ethnicity, or my sexual preferences, or any other thing. My primary identity is the name of God. I am a bearer of the name in every moment, And in every act, with every breath I take, I'm a bearer of the name of God. But what does it mean then? So if it's if God is saying, You shall not bear my name in vain, what is that what does that mean? What does in the in vain mean? The, The the word vain has to do with being deceitful. Being deceitful, uh, when it's used about God, it almost always has to do with speaking falsely about God. But it goes beyond that too. It's the, that, that word has this connotation of being empty. There's, it's the empty and indifferent way we speak and we carry around the name God has given to us. That's what it means to to bear the Lord's name in vain. The empty and indifferent way we speak and carry around his name. It's the arrogant, deceitful, empty words that we heard, we, we heard Pharaoh say in, in Exodus 5 when Moses first came to him and, and Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I, should, that I should obey him and let Israel go? And we've seen, we saw throughout the story that God was saying, Oh, you're, you're going to know my name by the end of this. You're going to know my name. But is this not the sort of indifference that we see, that we find slipping out of our mouths and in our lives all the time? It's not just curses on the pickup basketball court, though those are many. But it's about the, the way we shrug our shoulders at the fact that the God and creator of all things has spoken to us, has entered in to save us. I mean, I don't know how you, how you 
come to worship this morning. But if you're anything like me, you got a lot of things running through your head. And somewhere in that, somewhere in that list, hopefully God's there some, a lot of the time. There's an indifference to God in that that's not okay. This, it, it has to do with the things we say, but it doesn't, it's not all to do with the things we say. Remember that Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The indifference that we carry along colors everything that we do. From the way we take our coffee to the way we worship. It's present in the way I handle stress and anxiety. It's present in the way I seek God's will by most of the time, if I'm going to be honest, doing this. I'm going to make my best laid plans and then I'm going to ask God to baptize them. Indifference to God. So we come to church We say we're going to pray for each other, and often we do. We say we love each other, but then we go away and we tear each other apart. It's just empty, vain, religious attempts to look good sometimes. James, in his letter, says, when he's talking about the, the tongue, he says, with it we bless the Lord, our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. This is bearing the name of the Lord in an empty, indifferent way. And my empty indifference to, God, to God's name has the same effect that it had for Israel. I want you to hear these very strong words from the book of Amos. For three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not revoke the punishment because they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. Those who trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and turn aside the way of the afflicted. A man and his father go into the same girl so that my holy name is profane. We bear the name in an empty way when we treat others with like commodities. We bear the name in an empty way when, whenever we participate in unjust acts and systems. We bear the name in an indifferent, empty way when, with our indifference to the afflicted, to the poor, to the hungry. We bear the name in an indifferent way with casual sex. All those things were in those those verses from Amos. When we bear the name in an empty way, it results in the cursing of God's name among the nations. So you shall not bear the name of the Lord your God falsely or with indifference or in an empty way. Because, because the Lord will not Hold him guiltless. What that means is the Lord will not declare him innocent who, you, who bears his name in vain, who bears his name in an empty way. See, we tend to read, I think we tend to read this command and think that God is saying, I am he who must not be named. For you Harry Potter fans, right? That's not what he said, though. He says, you must not walk through this life bearing my name in an empty, indifferent way that is for no profit at all. You must bear my name. You do, if if you are in Christ today, you do bear his name. And you must do that truly, in truth, and fully. Not empty, but fully. God wants his people to take his name on our lips. He wants his people to bear his name. He wants not an empty, indifferent way, though, but a full, wholehearted way. The Heidelberg Catechism, um, we've been talking about that for the last few weeks. Uh, It's a discipleship tool that churches like ours have used for several hundred years um, and, and 
is very, very helpful in so many ways, even today. Um, it, it says the po- like positively what this, the, what this word means um, here. It'll be up on, here on the screen. We should use the holy name of God only with reverence and awe so that we may properly confess God, pray to God, and glorify God in all our words and works. Bear the name of the Lord fully. And let me, let's be really personal here. Why is that important to you right now? God doesn't tell you to avoid his name at all costs. He says to call upon the Lord, trusting that God answers when we call his name. Bear his name fully because he answers you when you call. The one who spread out the heavens with a word, the heavens and the earth and all that is with a word. The one who the Bible says inhabits eternity and is with the lowly and contrite in heart. For whom and through whom and to whom all things exist, the Alpha and the Omega. This very Lord our God, as David says in Psalm 40, He takes thought for me. That's why you must bear his that's that's why you must bear his name fully and not in an empty way. The Lord God of all you might think is indifferent to you, he is not. So we must not be indifferent to him. I am a bearer of the name. I'm a bearer of the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so I cannot, I must not, I shall not bear that name with deceit, hypocrisy, or indifference. But I do. I do. Why? I think actually when it comes down to it, we... We disobey this command because we don't believe it really matters that much. We lie to ourselves and we say, you know what? God's got better things to worry about. It's a false belief. God is not indifferent to us. We must not be indifferent to him. There's a few false beliefs, I think, involved in this. And I want to I wanna just point them out to you. They'll be up here on the screen. The first false belief that, that's involved here is that my words don't matter. That my words don't matter. They do. They do. We have to remember the right belief here. That every single word that comes out of my mouth will come before the judgment seat of Christ. I think about that every time I preach. I should, (laughs) I must think about that every time my mouth opens, though. Second false belief. If you don't get them all right now, that's fine. That's okay. I can revisit them with you later. That's um, or you can you can see them online too. The second false belief is that God can be treated with indifference. That's a false belief. God is the only, the only one, the only thing that can never be treated with indifference. God is worth and worthy of my praise with my every breath. That is the right belief that counters the false belief. He is worthy and worth my praise. But here's the third, and this may be something that has its hooks in us in the modern West more than anywhere else. That God's name is less important than mine. Here's the, here's the right belief to counter that. Remember that my name and your name are not constructed. It's not, your identity is not constructed. It's given It's given. God is the only one who names himself. And he has given you his name. 
I don't know about you, but I see this, the sort of indifference involved in those three false beliefs just woven into every area of my life. I bear his name lightly. Every time I pray and I let my mind drift. I bear the name lightly every time a careless word slips out of my mouth. I bear the name lightly every time I'm more concerned with how others think of me than how God thinks of me. And the more I think about it, the more I think about those things and I, and I evaluate my own motivations, the more crushing my disobedience becomes. I don't know about you, but this command more than any crushes me. Who can be declared innocent? Who can be saved? We look to Jesus. We look to Jesus. You must look to Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, did not count count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. That is the name of God. That is Yahweh, by the way. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus bore the name and was crushed under it for you. While we treat, while I treat God's name with indifference, sowing the seeds of blasphemy among the nations. The Bible tells us the truth, though no deceit was found in Jesus' mouth. And he spoke only the truth that he heard from God the Father. Jesus was condemned. Why was he condemned? For blasphemy against the name. Blasphemy against the name. We see that in Mark 14. We shrug our shoulders and we shove our religious lives into 60 to 75 minutes on a Sunday. Eh, 75 here, okay, at Christ Community, let's be honest. But while we're shrugging our shoulders indifferently, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father every moment of every day, and he always lives to intercede. Always lives to intercede for you and for me. Jen Wilkin, in her, uh, she has a a book on the Ten Commandments that I've been finding very, very helpful to to walk through as I'm walking through this, this sermon series. She says that we not need to seek out not just the control of our words, but the cleansing of our hearts. Remember, the abundance, out of the abundance of our hearts comes, comes the words out of our mouths. So we need to remember, as we look specifically at what Jesus did, and there's so much more, isn't there? There's so much more that he did to honor and glorify the name of Remember, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. So that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Believe that Jesus took all the indifferent, empty ways we bear God's name. He took them all on his own shoulders and he was condemned for all of our blasphemies. And as Peter says in Acts 4, there is no, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. I don't know about you, I have a hard time sometimes grasping the fact that I am forgiven and I am washed clean. Washed clean. I, I operate like I am under, uh, like I'm still condemned. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. We must seek and we seek the cleansing of our hearts through grace alone, by faith alone, in Christ alone, according to God's word alone, to the glory of God alone. Amen? You were created and you were redeemed to bear the name of God 
in fullness, not in an empty way. So we need to bear the name with integrity. We need to bear the name with integrity. And what, is, what, I, what I mean by that is we bear the name of the Father. When we bear the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in this world, the Bible, Jesus, promises us that that will come with suffering. Jesus says, if anyone would follow me, let him take up his, his cross, deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would lose, who would gain his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will find it. Indifference, empty the empty ways that we, that we bear God's name, that's overcome when we bear the name in, of Jesus in fullness. When we, when we believe that God really has washed us fully clean. When we believe he has really set us free. By the Holy Spirit, we, we take up our cross and we follow Jesus wherever he leads. Wherever he leads. That, my friends, is the answer to our indifference. It always, always, always is found in Jesus and in him alone. If you're looking for another answer, if you're looking for even a slightly different answer, I'm sorry, I will never have another answer for you. Praise God, I will never have another answer for you. One name. One, one name holds weight above them all. There is no other name. And God, you have revealed that name. You have given it. You have laid it upon us and you have said, you, behold, you are mine in Christ. You gave what was most precious to you for, for ungodly enemies of your name unfaithful people. And yet you've always remained faithful and you always will. Lord, it is who you are. Lord, we ask that you would work through us, that you would empower us to follow Jesus wherever he leads, that we would, take, we would bear our crosses in following him. And we can do that Lord, because, you, because Jesus, you tell the truth when you say, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my burden, you say, which is not a burden, and I will take yours. Lord, we don't want to be, we don't want to worship or live in indifferent or, or empty ways. We don't want to be the cause of the blaspheming of your name on, among anyone. So Lord, we ask that you would, you would renew our hearts. You would cleanse us of, all, of, of our sin. That you would empower us to boldly walk in your truth in, according to your commandment. That you would fulfill your law in us as we are in Christ. But God, don't ever let us fall for the deceitful schemes of the devil that say, yeah, God might not be, might not be pleased with you in Jesus. You gotta do something else. You gotta, you gotta, uh, you, we've gotta balance the scales in some way. Don't ever let us fall for that lie, Lord God. Lord, we are crushed under our sins. It is Jesus who has taken those off us and raised us to life with, with him. Lord God, we thank you we thank you for these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning we are in the name of Jesus. We come to the, the table that, that Jesus provided for us. He's given us, he's given us his name. The Lord God has given us his name and he's invited us to his table. 
his table in which we are reminded over and over and over again that Jesus Christ fully paid for our debt. He fully obeyed God's law. We look at Jesus, the one who fulfilled the law, (laughs) as our hope. And because we can, we can do that because God made a way in Jesus. We are accepted and we can never be forsaken, ever. And we come to commune with Jesus. That's why we call it communion. We come to sit around the table with Jesus. Jesus says, I am the bread that nourishes you. You can do nothing without me. I am the vine in whom you must abide if, we're gonna, if you're going to bear fruit. And as we come, as we come around to his table, we're bound together. Once again, we're reminded how bound we are together. God has given not just me the name. He's given it to you. This is our primary identity. Our, this is the focal point. The defining thing about our lives. You are given the name of God. You are part of his family in Christ. So we come in Christ's love and in affection for one another as well. And, and we come to this feast in hope, knowing that as surely as God raised Jesus from the dead, that our Lord Jesus will come again and we will be made like he is. Pr- prayer turned to praise. Faith turned to sight. The Lord Jesus is better than we think he is. Amen? This is the Lord's table. The only, the only ticket in is Jesus. But if you, if you are not there, if you don't feel, if, if Jesus is, if, if you can't claim Jesus as your Savior, if you don't, th- if you're just not there and won't grasp hold of him, then this table is not for you. Not because we want to exclude you, but because we want to include you in truth. Don't come in an empty way. Come in a full way. This, we're not keep, we, we have no desire to keep you at an arm's length. The only thing that keeps you from this table is unbelief. That's it. And if today, if today you say, Jesus, I believe, then my friend, this table is for you. <laughs> the way we do this is, um, we, we go to the middle and come around the edges and uh, the, the elders will, um, will serve you here at these tables. They'll drop the, the bread into your hands, um, put the cup out on the table. Please bring the bread and the cup back to, the, to your seats. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And after giving thanks He broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And on the same night, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, this cup is the new covenant and my blood shed for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. People of God, this is the Lord's table. Jesus invites you to it. Come when you're ready.